So, Hooterie, going to do some siding in work with the uh, Alpex 4K from Hick Micro. Um, it is proper dark, 7-ish o'clock. Um, last light was over an hour ago. That is the range out there, runs out to 500 metres. So, um, going to try this with um, obviously no range light. So, this is what it's going to look like. Well, this is what it looks like. And I'm just going to do a quick recording on daytime mode um, using the light that's out there. Admittedly, it's half moon tonight, so there is a bit of ambient moonlight. Uh, but this will give you a bit of an idea as to what you can expect. And then we'll flick through into nighttime mode and then I'll try out a couple of torches. So I've got a, it's an N8 Vision. Uh, I think I got that from the UK from memory. It has a laser diode emitter in it. We'll try that one first. And then um, I've got another torch. It's not a homemade brand, but it was uh, a guy on AHN that uh, put a batch together, made them out of China. Um, it performed really well on my ATN. It was probably the pick of the bunch on the ATN going back six years. So I've got those two. They're in my kit. There is another one at home somewhere, a tree light, uh, D R W -E, e L I G H T. It didn't do as well last time with the ATN, and admittedly, it is a two cell torch. So a bit longer in the tooth, whereas these two, nice and short, which short, no weight. So we'll see how this goes. Let's get cracking. All right, so this is daytime mode with no light, just the ambient moonlight. There's going to be a plane come over in a minute, but that target is, I think, about 15 yards, 15 meters. I'm going to do some sighting as I need to bore sight the rifle. It needs to be pretty close to do that. Um, now if I get around that, obviously there's a metric ton of noise in there, but realistically, you could still actually use that. Now I should just focus this the right way. Wrong way. Now, out the back there, that you can just make out, that's 400 and 500 at the back there. So that's actually a gong at four and 500 yards, hang on, meters. So that's 400, that's 500, hang on, three, four, Get this around the right way. I put a torch on to make more sense, and that's 500 right up the back. So whilst it's not really usable for obviously shooting, because you wouldn't know what you were shooting at, other than a gong, that's some pretty good light gathering from a daytime camera. Uh, well, a lens on a on a night vision scope, daytime scope uh, in daytime mode. That's pretty fantastic. So I am going to switch to nighttime mode, and then we're going to have a bit of a, a look and see what happens with a couple of different torches. That, my friend, is a fox. And that is no torch light, no nothing. That is... Look at him. Oh, I've gone too far. Look as noisy as, but how cool is that? Oh, I hope I know it's sighted in my rifle. That is... Oh, that now there is 100 metres, so... Look, to be fair, I'll give him 85 metres. But that's ridiculous. That's with ambient moonlight, like half moon, no torch, no nothing in nighttime mode. And then obviously, looking further out, we focus that. Which way am I going here? Like, still, I don't know that you'd be taking shots out there, but the amount of light that that is bringing in and information is phenomenal. That's friggin' amazing. And as I said, I did get a look through this at a demo night, at Hunt the Night, and I do recall it being very good, but that's just ridiculous. Exceeding expectations right here. Alright, I'm going to get some torches and we'll do some testing of torches just quickly and then I've got to sight this stuff in otherwise I'm not going to achieve all the goals for tonight. Back in a bit. Alright so I won't be testing out the uh, N8 vision with the laser diode emitter because she doesn't seem to want to be working. It looked like it was when I had it at home but 
which is uh, a bit sporadic and intermittent and certainly not as powerful as it probably should be so I will have a play with that one at home just double check it and come back another time for that one but um, I'll uh, turn this off and get the, the hound light and we'll get that out and see how that goes back in a sec all right so we're back with the hound light now I've actually fixed this one to the top of the scope so I don't have to dick around with it so much and I have had a bit of a test look and yeah it's bloody amazing so I might have to play with how it's mounted because the flood is well it's a tight flood if you can describe it as that but let's see what it looks like so that's on flood mode admittedly flood mode based on where I've actually got it in the holder I can't really go much further back to zoom out but if I really need to that's um zoomed right in and there's kangaroos out there they are I think that is the 200 yard that's one right there that's 150 or two there so there's somewhere between 200 and 250 if I was smart I'd turn on the um there's a rangefinder we know for sure but at this point in time it's still early days so I haven't had a play that much with that but um and again, that 100 mound, 100 yard, 100 meter mound does um, block a lot of the, the light getting over. So you lose in here, you lose quite a bit that's not getting out. But that's 500 meters out there at the top. So we can focus that any better. Ooh, that got very, very clear. Kangaroos, kangaroos, kangaroos. There's no deer. Thought there might have been some goats maybe floating around tonight, but they seem to have disappeared. But um, that is. That's really, really fantastic. Um, certainly. I'm pretty sure that is miles ahead of the ATN that I had. Admittedly, the ATN was um, probably five years, six years old. But for a big sandberg or a red deer, even a fallow, I suppose, um, at that distance, I don't think you'd be too concerned about taking a shot. As I said though, you do lose a bit of light on that mound, so probably not the most accurate representation, but it'd be better if we could um, get the light over that. It looks better looking that way, just because there's more light actually getting over the top of the mound, down the bottom there, at the bottom of the screen. Anyway, that is Amazeballs. So believe the hype, it is all it's cracked up to be. And with a, well look, this is a decent torch. Um, I have not had a play with the one that Hunt Knight have got on, well, that are bought in specifically for this sort of device. I can only imagine that it would be very similar, if not possibly better. Um, this is a 850 uh, NM pill in this one, so maximum light, maximum distance um, can be seen, like the glow can visibly be seen by animals and I have seen in the past foxes and deer that have actually looked straight at it because they've noticed it. Um, it would be interesting to see how it goes. Sorry, I just thought I saw a fox right up. Up in there, I thought. Saw eyes anyway. Um, it would be interesting to see how it went with the 940 pill. Obviously, the visibility of that to uh, animals and the naked eye is markedly less. Like, you really can't see any. It's a very minimal glow that you see coming out of the LED itself. So, um, you can't see it. Humans definitely can't see it. And I've not seen. I can't recall any animals actually reacting to it. Um, the downside is though, you do lose distance. So if you're wanting 
a long distance throw and the ability to get good data information back, like the actual image quality. 850 is probably where you want to be at, but if you're um, only shooting out to 100, 150, the 940 will probably do you. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to call the testing complete because I've got no more torches. Um, I'm just going to go inside in these rifles and see how we go. Thanks for watching. Peter out.